In 1926, a physicist named Erwin Schrödinger wrote down an equation that would change our understanding of reality forever. This single equation explains why atoms are stable, how semiconductors work, why the periodic table has the structure it does, and even how the sun generates energy. It's the foundation of quantum mechanics, and today we're going to understand exactly what it means. Let's start with what we knew before quantum mechanics. In classical physics, the world is predictable. If you throw a ball, Newton's laws tell you exactly where it'll land. You measure the ball's position. You measure its velocity. And from that moment on, its entire future is determined. The ball follows a single, definite path through space. But here's where things get strange. When scientists started looking at the atomic scale, this picture completely broke down. Electrons don't behave like tiny balls. You can't point to an electron and say it's right there with this exact velocity. Instead, particles at the quantum scale exist in a fuzzy cloud of possibilities. They're somehow everywhere and nowhere at the same time. This is where the wave function comes in. Physicists represent this quantum fuzziness with a mathematical object called psi. Psi is a wave that spreads through space, oscillating with peaks and troughs. But here's the crucial thing. This isn't a physical wave like a water wave. You can't see it or touch it. It's a mathematical tool that encodes all the information about a quantum particle. So what does the wave function actually tell us? Here's the key insight discovered by Max Born. If you take the wave function and square it, you get the probability of finding the particle at each location. Where the wave function has large amplitude, you're more likely to find the particle. Where it's small, the particle is unlikely to be found. This is called the probability density. Now we can finally look at Schrodinger's equation itself. It tells us how this wave function changes over time. On the left side, we have IH bar times the partial derivative of PSI with respect to time. On the right side, we have the Hamiltonian operator acting on PSI. Let's break down what each part means. The left side describes how the wave function changes with time. The I is the imaginary unit that square root of negative one. H bar is Planck's constant divided by two pi, a tiny number that sets the scale of quantum effects. And this partial derivative tells us the rate of change. Together, this side answers the question, how does our quantum state evolve from one moment to the next? The right side contains the Hamiltonian represented by H hat. This operator captures the total energy of the system. It has two parts, kinetic energy which depends on how the particle is moving, and potential energy, which depends on where the particle is. For a particle in a potential V, the Hamiltonian looks like this. Negative H bar squared over 2m times the second derivative plus V of x. So what is this equation really saying? It's telling us that the way a quantum state changes in time is entirely determined by its energy. High energy states oscillate rapidly. Low energy states change slowly. The Schrodinger equation is like a recipe. Give me the wave function now, tell me the energies involved, and I'll tell you what the wave function will be at any future time. Let's see this in action with a classic example, a particle trapped in a box. Imagine an electron confined between two walls it can't escape. The potential energy is zero inside the box and infinite at the walls. This simple setup reveals something profound about quantum mechanics. When we solve the Schrodinger equation for this box, we get standing wave solutions. The wave function must be zero at the walls since the particle can't exist there. This constraint means only certain wavelengths fit perfectly inside the box. The ground state has half a wavelength. The first excited state has one full wavelength. The second excited state has one and a half wavelengths and so on. Here's the revolutionary part. Each standing wave corresponds to a specific energy level. The particle can only have these discrete energy values, nothing in between. This is quantization, and it's where quantum mechanics gets its name. The energy levels go as n squared, 1, 4, 9, 16. The gaps between levels mean the particle can only absorb or emit specific amounts of energy. Of Now here's something that surprises many people. The Schrodinger equation is completely deterministic. Given the wave function at any moment, you can predict with absolute certainty what it will be at any future time. The wave function evolves smoothly and predictably, like a classical wave. There's no randomness in this evolution. But here's the twist. 
that makes quantum mechanics so strange. When you actually measure a particle's position, you don't find it spread out like the wave function suggests. You find it at one specific location. The smooth wave function suddenly collapses to a spike at the measured position. And which position you get? That's genuinely random, governed only by the probabilities from the wave function. This is the deep mystery at the heart of quantum mechanics. The Schrodinger equation gives us certainty about how probabilities evolve, but fundamental uncertainty about what we'll actually observe. The wave function tells us everything that can be known, yet the outcome of any single measurement remains unpredictable. This beautiful equation opened the door to a reality stranger than anyone imagined. For more awesome science and technology videos, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. See you next time.